Hello there, my name is John and I'm the pastor of Creative Arts and I want to welcome you to Rivers United Church. Rivers United Church exists to connect those who are unconnected to God and to others. And we believe that you could not have picked a better Sunday to be here. If you would like to learn more about Rivers United Church, you can go to our website at riversunited.church. On our website, you'll find tons of resources. If you would like to sign up for our digital weekly and receive a weekly email about what's going on, what we're praying about, what message series that we're in, go ahead, click the button that says digital weekly and sign up to receive that weekly email. If you're visiting with us today, we want you to know that our purpose here was not for you to give us money. But if you would like to partner with us, there are several ways that you can go. You can do that. You go to our website and click the give button. You can find all the resources that details how you can partner with us. If you have a question or maybe you have a prayer request, something you want for us to pray with you about, go ahead and send that prayer request to connect at riversunited.church and we'll get back with you as soon as possible. Guys, we believe that you're not here today by accident, so we're glad you're here. Here is this week's message. Well, good morning, Rivers United Church. My name is Dave Kleppner. I serve as the family life pastor here, and I'm so glad you are tuning in online to watch uh, this message today. I get the privilege of preaching in this series, Haunted House, that Pastor John has been preaching uh, my message today is dealing with the storms of life. Have you ever been in a storm? You know, have you ever been in a storm out on the water? You know, about 20 years ago, I went on a fishing trip. And it was a fishing, fishing charter out on the Gulf of Mexico, uh, just north of Tampa, Florida. I went with one of my best friends, and he... He got a deal and he said, hey, come fishing with me for the day out in the Gulf. We're going to have some fun. It was in the middle of the summer. So we took this trip out in, out in the Gulf of Mexico. We began fishing and uh, it was a, a fun day. Everything was going great. There was probably 20, 25 people on this fishing charter and we were sitting on the outside of the boat fishing. And on the inside of the boat, there were little restaurant booths where there was a snack bar and so we could have lunch in there and hang out a little bit if we wanted to take a break from fishing. About two o'clock, uh, I was fishing and my friend was on the inside and out of the blue, this storm came up out in the Gulf of Mexico and there we were on this boat and a storm was coming up. The, the rain started coming down hard, the thunder, the lightning. The captain realized he needed to hightail it back to the shore and so, he just takes off. And it was one of those things where the boat was going kush, kush, kush. So we all get inside where the restaurant booths are. And uh, I happened to be in the restaurant booth where my back was facing the door of the boat. Now, I don't know if you've ever been drenched like uh, maybe from a fire hose before, but that's what was happening to me in my back. It was like someone was taking a 55 gallon drum of water and just drenching it as the boat was going kush, it was just drenching and so the door had been propped open with like a bungee cord so I had to walk over there and to get that door closed and I finally did and the water was coming inside a lot of the water was coming in the boat it was crazy and I'd never been in a storm out on the water like that but what was interesting is we got close to shore there were these little waterways like canals and the storm had passed and we got on those little canals and it was as calm as anything. That story kind of reminds me of this passage that we find in Mark's gospel. And Jesus was in the boat with the disciples. Many of you know this passage. And he falls asleep in the boat. And this is found in Mark 4. Now, the story takes place in the Sea of Galilee. And if you know anything about the Sea of Galilee, it's located uh, northeast of Israel. And uh, it's about 700 feet below sea level. And what I read was storms can come up very quickly and they can be quite severe with the wind. And so the disciples were in the boat during a storm. And, you know, if you remember, some of the disciples were seasoned fishermen. And they panicked and they were scared. And you probably remember this story in Mark 4. So let's place ourselves in the boat today. 
Let's go back in time and, and see what it's like to be in this boat with the disciples, with Jesus, in Mark 4, 35 to 41. If you have your Bibles and you're following along, you can turn to uh, this passage. You can also read, it, read along with me here. That day when evening came, he said to his disciples, let us go to the other side. Leaving the crowd behind, they took him along just as he was in the boat. There were also other boats with him, and a furious squall came up, and the waves broke over the boat so that it was nearly swamped. Now Jesus was in the stern, sleeping on a cushion. The disciples woke him, and they said to him, Teacher, don't you care if we drown? And verse 39. He got up, rebuked the wind, and said to the waves, Quiet, be still. Then the wind died down, and it was completely calm. He said to his disciples, Why are you so afraid? Do you still have no faith? They were terrified, and they asked each other, Who is this? Even the wind and the waves obey him. You know, I believe there are some truths we can glean from this passage beyond the obvious. So I want to break, break it apart today, this passage, and I want, to, I want to give you seven truths from this passage that's going to help you in the storms of life. And the first truth is this, evening will come to your life. Evening is going to come. Notice the opening passage. It says, that day, when evening came, he said to his disciples, let us go to the other side. That day, that appointed time, evening was coming. It reminds me of King Solomon in Ecclesiastes 3, who said that there is a time for everything, a season for every activity under the heavens. And the reality is, there's a time sometimes for evening to come, and the reality is that dark times come. And you may have challenges, you may have problems, you may have trials, but praise God, morning will also come, and the sun will come out again. And here's the point. Yeah, evening comes, but we are not left in darkness. I love this passage in John 8, 12. Jesus said this, I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me will not walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. And David said this in Psalm 23, as many of you know this part of the scripture. He says, even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death. And then the, the NIV actually says, even though I walk through the darkest valley, I will fear no evil. For you are with me. David, says, David said, even though I walk through the darkest valley close to death, God is with me. Notice it didn't say David camped out there. He said, I walked through it. And when the darkness comes, that doesn't mean that God's not there. When the darkness came in the story with Jesus in the boat, it doesn't mean he wasn't there. And you know, these are truths most of us know. We, we know God is with us in many times. And sometimes we might ask the question, why? Why do I have to go through this? Why am I going through it? Why doesn't that person go through it? Come on, God, I made the right decision here. Why do I have to go through this? Well, I learned in my own life that the storms I go through, whether it's COVID-19, which I just went through a couple of weeks ago, or tragic deaths in my life, or a divorce, or losing your job, it, it helps me to rely on God during the toughest times of my life. And not only that, it helps me be able to minister to other people. It helps me to be able to be where they are. I like this passage that Paul gives us in 2 Corinthians. He says this in chapter 1, verse 3 to 4. He says, Praise be to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of compassion, and the God of all comfort, who comforts us in all our troubles. Now listen to this. 
so that we can comfort those in any trouble with the comfort we are received from God. You know, Charles Spurgeon, many of you know, is a fam famous English Baptist preacher and author. And he said this, I love this. He said, I would go to the deeps a hundred times to cheer a downcast spirit. It is good for me to have been afflicted that I might know how to speak a word in season to the one that is weary. So yes, in your life, evening will come, but God will not abandon you. And your experiences may be used to help others. Your storm can be used to help others in their time of need. The second truth I want to share today is sometimes you need to leave the crowd behind. Back to the passage again with Jesus and the disciples, verse 36. It says, leaving the crowd behind, they took him along just as he was in the boat. You know, sometimes we need to leave the crowd behind. Sometimes we need to move forward as God leads. And sometimes when we leave the crowd behind and we're doing what God says, we sometimes enter a storm. Sometimes those decisions we make, it's not always bad, but it takes us to a storm. And sometimes God tests our faith, and the disciples certainly experienced this. They had to move to their next destination. They, they had to cross the sea. They couldn't stay on the other side of the sea. And as Christians, sometimes we have to leave the crowd behind. We live at a higher standard. And that might mean that you need to make some new friends. <laughs> that might mean that you don't participate in that gossip at work. That might mean you don't go to that crazy bar in Suffolk to meet people. Sometimes we need to leave the crowd behind. In the story we read today, the disciples and Jesus had to leave the crowd behind because they had more work to do on the other side of the sea. In fact, if you read the next chapter in Mark 5, you see where they got to the other side and they met a man who was in the tombs who was possessed by demons. And if you remember the story, Jesus cast the demons into some pigs and they went and drowned. And they had work to do. They had to get through that evening and get to the other side because God had something for them to do. And maybe God is asking you to leave the crowd behind because he has something for you to do. He has a higher standard for you. If God has definitely called you to something, he's going to provide everything you need. He's asking you to follow him and leave the crowd behind. And I guarantee it, if you do that for Jesus, it's going to be well worth it. Okay, the third truth we can glean from this passage. Here it is. God is with us in the good times and the bad. Let's listen to verse 36 again. Leaving the crowd behind. They took him along just as he was. I like how it says, they took him along just as he was in the boat. Here you have the Savior of the world who was in the boat with them. And I believe he probably knew that they were about to enter a storm. But you know what? He stayed with them. He, he didn't say, okay, guys, go to the other side. You know what? I'm going to stay here at the Galilee Palms Holiday Inn and catch some Z's tonight and I'll grab a boat tomorrow and meet you on the other side. No, he stayed with them in the boat. It was dark. A storm was coming. The boat was about to sink, but he was with them. You know, when you think of Jesus, you think of his presence, the Holy Spirit. You think of God being with us. In fact, Isaiah, the prophet, when he was prophesying about Jesus, the Messiah, going to be born. This is 700 years before he was born. He said his name is going to be called Emmanuel, which means God with us. He's with us. And the last words you see recorded in Matthew's gospel, at the end of Matthew's gospel, the words of Jesus says, Lo, I'm with you always, even until the very end of the age. Jesus is with us. 
God is with us in the storms. You know, when we look back at the Old Testament, when we read the stories, like for example in Daniel 3, we read about Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Do you remember that? They wouldn't bow down to the king's idol, King Nebuchadnezzar. They made a, an image that was, I think, 90 feet tall and 9 feet wide, and they wouldn't bow down to it. They would only serve the Lord. And he threw them in this crazy hot furnace because of that. And I like what Daniel 3, 25 says. This is the king's words, right? He said this, look, because he threw them in there and they weren't dying. He says, look, I see four men walking around in the fire, unbound and unharmed. And the fourth looks like a son of the gods. Now, many have said that that was a protective angel. I've heard others say it was an epiphany of the pre-incarnate Jesus. But the truth is, the fourth person was in there with them. God didn't prevent them from being thrown into the fire, but he was with them in the fire. And then you go up a couple chapters to Daniel 6, and of course the story of Daniel in the lion's den. He was thrown into the den. God didn't prevent him from experiencing that, but God sent his protective angel in the den. The truth is, whatever you're going through, whatever storm, whatever fire, if it's a lion's den, God is with you in that storm. Here's something to remember. Never let the storms of life cause you to doubt God's presence in your boat. That's tweetable, right? Put, <laughs> put that on Twitter. Never let the storms of life cause you to doubt God's presence in your boat. Hashtag God is with you in the storm. All right, a fourth truth today. Here's the fourth. Here's the reality. Storms can come out of nowhere. Storms can happen quickly. Look at verse 37. A furious squall came up and the waves broke over the boat so that it was nearly swamped. The disciples had no warning. They didn't have the weather channel. They didn't have a weather radio. And the truth is, the storms of life can happen in the blink of an eye. We may not be expecting them. They can happen at a moment's notice, even with no warning. But God's going to be there. I remember Valentine's Day, 1981. And I've shared this before, but I remember the day that my father received a phone call letting our family know that my brother had died in a car accident. It was a crazy, tragic experience. It was a storm that came out of nowhere. And then one year later, my 20-year-old sister died of a brain hemorrhage. It rocked our family. It was a horrible storm. It was a never-ending storm because it lasted for two years. But what I can tell you is in those times, God was never more present with our family. First thing is, my, my dad was never a believer. He wasn't a Christian, and neither was my brother. But through those experiences, a few years later, my brother came to know Christ, and so did my father. And they continued to serve Christ the rest of their lives. Sometimes we go through these storms and we don't understand, but we have to remember that God has a plan. The storms can come out of nowhere, but God will be there right by your side to see you through. Another thing that's important to remember, number five, another truth. Jesus personifies peace. He personifies peace. Look at this verse, verse 38. Jesus was in the stern sleeping on a cushion. <laughs> the disciples woke him and said, Teacher, don't you care if we drown? Haven't you been there? Haven't you been in the middle of the storm and you're like, Abba, Father, don't you care if I'm drowning here? Come on. Why are you asleep in the middle of my problems? And the disciples felt that way too. But here's the thing to remember. Jesus had no fear. Jesus had no anxiety. Jesus wasn't worried. I'll tell you what, when I was in that boat in the Gulf of Mexico and the waves were crashing into the boat and I was getting drenched, 
I gotta admit, I was a little nervous. Not Jesus. Scripture tells us he was sleeping in the stern of the boat. He is the Prince of Peace. He is peace. He brings peace. And he can calm the stormy waters. There's nothing too difficult for him. And he can calm the wind and waves in your life too. Do you need peace in the middle of your storm? Look to Jesus. I want to share a passage of scripture with you in Isaiah. This is chapter 26, verse 3. I love this. I even have this on a plaque in my office. It says, you will keep in perfect peace those whose minds are steadfast because they trust in you. I love that. Perfect peace. There's another version of this passage I want to share with you. It's the amplified version. I don't know if you look at the amplified version that often, but I think this version really helps us understand the meaning. It says, you will keep in perfect and constant peace the one whose mind is steadfast. That is, tells you what it is, committed and focused on you in both inclination and character because he trusts and takes refuge in you with hope and confident expectation. He's going to keep you in peace if you look to him. If you are in the middle of a storm, Look to him, the Prince of Peace. Jesus is peace. He personifies peace, and he will give you peace too. And let's look at number six. Number six. God can change your situation. Just because you're in the storm doesn't mean it's going to last forever. He has the power to change your situation. Look at verse 39. This is when they're panicking. They said, don't you care if we drown? Here's what he does. He, it says he got up, he rebuked the wind and said to the waves, quiet, be still. Then the wind died down and was completely calm. Here we have the prince of peace sleeping on a cushion. And in about two seconds, he calms the storm. He, he changes the weather. And at a moment's notice, God can change your circumstance as well. Just as fast as the storm can come, God can bring it to peace just as fast. You know, the disciples had to go through the storm for them to really understand who God was. God is a miracle-working God, and sometimes we don't expect miracles. We ask for little things. We uh, we, we think God isn't big, but the truth is he is big and calming a storm is nothing. God can change your circumstances as well. The disciples in this story were scared. I mean, they believed the boat was about to sink and they might even drown or die. And they questioned God's compassion. They said, don't you care? Well, here's the truth. God cares and there is no question he can change your situation. All right, number seven. And this is the last truth, but certainly not the least. Do not doubt God's ability. Do not doubt God's ability. Let's, let's look at verse 40. He said to his disciples, why are you so afraid? Do you still have no faith? They were terrified, and they asked each other, Who is this? Even the wind and the waves obey him. You know, I think the disciples knew that he was a good teacher. They probably knew that he could do miracles. But could he change the weather? I mean, think about this. Jesus changed the weather. This is when they realized he wasn't just a great teacher or a man. He was God in the flesh. This is when the divinity of Christ became real to them. And here's the truth for you. God is bigger than any challenge you face. Let's not doubt his abilities. If he can change the weather, he can do the same in the storm of your life. I want to close this out today with a passage that's found in Psalm 107. And you know, 
This mirrors this story that I read to you today in Mark's Gospel. It also reminds me of my trip to Florida out on the Gulf of Mexico. But listen to Psalm 107, verses 28 to 30. It says, Then they cried out to the Lord in their trouble, and he brought them out of their distress. He stilled the storm to a whisper. The waves of the sea were hushed, and they were glad when it grew calm, and he guided them to their desired haven. Today, if you are in a storm, I would encourage you to cry out to the Lord. This passage says they cried out to him in their trouble, and you can do the same. And it says he brought them out of their distress. He, he stilled the storm to a whisper. Think about that. The waves of the sea were hushed. This is what he did for the disciples. And it said they were glad when it grew calm. Aren't we all going to be glad when that storm gets to be calmed down? And then it said he guided them to their desired haven. I love that. And again, it reminds me of my fishing trip when the captain of our boat as we got into close to the shore, those little waterways, and he guided us to our desired haven, that part where we started, and the water was calm at that time. And God can do that in your life as well. If you're going through a storm today, I just want to encourage you to cry out to the Lord. He loves you so much. He has the ability to calm your storm. But even if you're in the storm, know that the Prince of Peace is with you and he can bring you peace even in the middle of the storm. Morning's coming. It's not going to last forever, forever. And God is certainly with you. Well, let's pray today. Can I pray for you? Gracious God, for those here today who are listening and watching, I pray, O oh God, you would help them to remember that God is with them in the storm. There's nothing too hard for you, O oh God. Help them to look to you in the middle of their storm. Help them to remember that you are the Prince of Peace, that there's nothing too difficult for you, God, that you can move in their lives. If there's someone today that's watching this and needs to hear that, Lord, I pray you would encourage them help them in their storm. Maybe there's someone here, Lord, that's watching that doesn't even have faith in you or that have, has drifted from you. I pray, God, that they would come to know you as their Savior. Lord, you are with them from the time they're born till their last breath. Lord, help them to realize that. God, we love you. We thank you that you're with us in the storms of life. And thank you for these reminders in Scripture that show us, God, that you can help us through the storm. Lord, we thank you again and we praise you. In Christ's name, amen.